Good morning, y'all. Half Mile Sniper here. We are back on the range this morning. We're going to do some work with the 6.5 PRC since I made a change to it. Let me get finished getting set up. We'll bring you back. I'll show you what I did and we'll get to shooting. So, y'all sit back, kick your feet up, enjoy the ride. Got most everything set up. Let me turn you around and show you what I've done. I have mounted my Thunder Beast brake onto my rifle. This brake works in conjunction with my suppressor. My suppressor will seal here. Unfortunately, while I'm in California, can't be running my suppressor. And we are just about ready to get started. I know there's lots of people who seem to have some dislike for my portable shooting bench because, oh, it moves. Yeah, it moves a little bit. And it moves in recoil. The thing about moving in recoil is by the time the gun's recoiling, that bullet's already out of the barrel. That movement's not affecting the shot. It's just a little temporary portable bench for those times when I don't have a good hard bench to work from. So give me a couple more minutes to finish getting set up. We're going to Take some of the, uh, uh, the same 45.5 grains of IMR4831. We're going to see how the mounting the brake affects the point of impact. We'll adjust the scope to compensate for that. Shoot a five round group and uh, see if we're still maintaining under an inch. So hang on, we'll bring you right back. Okay, so we got the target camera running and y'all are running. I've already loaded the magazine, so y'all don't have to put up with watching me do that. I did bring the Tacticam, and for the second five shots, I may try to set the Tacticam up so you can see how it is I'm holding the uh, reticle here. So without further ado, let's take a uh, shot and see how much the, the uh, brake has affected the point of impact. Nothing else has been changed on this rifle since we last shot it. Okay, so I have two dots down there. We're going to shoot our first shots on the upper dot. This is the first shot post brake install. Well. Let's shoot another one. Well, color me surprised.
Well, that wasn't a bad group. It looks like I put four in one hole and then got a little bit sloppy and let one get away. It's still about a half inch group. I think, if I remember correctly, last time out, once things settled in, we were hitting just a tick left and a tick high. So we are going to go just literally one click right and one click down. And then I'll try to get the Tacticam set up and we'll shoot the next five round group and y'all can see what it is I'm looking at. Uh. Okay, so I spent some time and tried to get the Tacticam set up. I'm not sure how well it's going to uh, be viewing, but we're going to try. I did uh, make ever so slight of a scope adjustment. I went down to and right to. We'll see what that does to us. The other thing is with the Tacticam in, I'm looking through the scope differently, so I'm kind of curious as to what kind of group I'll be shooting through the uh, through the Tacticam. Ears in, ears on. Well, that's not going to work out because that's in the way of the scope. Okay, after all that time I spent leveling the scope, or leveling the camera, it is way off. Yeah, that's about as close as it's going to get. Okay. Tacticam is running. feel much closer to the scope right now. And we'll shoot this for verification on the bottom dot. Oh, it looks like I went too far down and too far right. Maybe I only need it one. Now I'm using I don't know how well the Tacticam's picking up the reticle. The center dot is a diamond, and I'm using the bottom point of the diamond for my aiming point. Yeah, I'm having difficulty doing this through the uh, Tacticam. But let's see what happens. I mean, it looks like an okay group, but it's real fuzzy trying to trying to make the uh, Tacticam clear really affects my ability to see through the scope. So let me uh, shut things down and we'll go get that uh, target. All right, y'all, let's take a look at that target. Here's our group with the, uh, after the installation of the brake that is four shots right there fifth shot was obviously me that's going to be about 0.6 inch group we'll measure it when I get home so that's the post brake install if there was a uh, point of impact shift it was very minor I went 
one click right and two clicks down and then we shot a group with the Tacticam. Now with the Tacticam it was very difficult because I couldn't see the reticle clearly. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera. I obviously held it the wrong spot. The other four here kind of where they need it to go. It looks like it'll be about a one inch group but I blame the Tacticam, not the gun, not the ammo, not necessarily the shooter. But we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. When I get home, I'll put the uh, calipers on them. I did mean to bring them, but I forgot to bring the calipers. Okay, so now that we're back home, these four shots here measured in at 0.312 inches. And if we add the one I threw back into the group, we come in at a 0.677. Still pretty respectable. And then with the Tacticam, all five here came in at a 0 .807 inch group. Yeah, it's hard to shoot with the Tacticam. Well, that was kind of fun. I've had enough fun with the Tacticam today, so I am going to put it away. And uh, we'll go home and get this video edited up. Hopefully the Tacticam footage turned out okay. I would like for y'all to see what it is I see when I'm shooting. Even though <laughs> with the Tacticam I see things very, very differently. But uh, we'll see how that looks. Uh, dealing with the small screen on the telephone can't really uh, get a good idea of what what the image looks like. At least I can't. Others may, but not I. Real quick video. Point of, point of impact shift was negligible. Oh, that's right. I want it to... I'm going to leave them right where they are. Uh, point of impact shift was negligible. It'll be interesting to see what the point of impact shift with the suppressor is for this rifle. Uh, this is first time I've mounted a brake that the point of impact did not shift considerably. And when I say considerably, I'm talking like half an inch or more. Um, so I'm real pleased with that. Next time out, we'll be doing a ladder test. We'll start working up the uh, load with the IMR 4831 and see what kind of velocities we can get to. But that's for another day. Thank you all for hanging with me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. Thank you for hanging out in the chats with me. I really appreciate that. This is Half Mile Sniper reminding everybody to carry everywhere you can. As the saying goes, stay strapped or get clapped. If you need a CCW, by all means, get one. If you're in a constitutional carry state, you don't need one, but I suggest getting one anyways, because you never know. When you travel, you may not be at a place that uh, accepts your constitutional carry. So best be, uh, best be covered all the way around. Remember, it's only getting crazier out there. So until next time, folks, this is Half Mile Sniper reminding y'all, stay safe, keep shooting, and we'll catch you next time. Send it. Hit.